Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what are the halogens, trends of the halogens, properties of the halogens, an exam style question and finally a summary. So let's begin by having a look at what exactly are the halogens. Well the halogens are in group 17 of our periodic table and they have seven electrons in their outer shell. Here we have an example of fluorine, one of our halogens. Fluorine has nine electrons and you can see it has two electrons in its innermost shell and seven in its outermost shell. Our halogens lie in the P block of our periodic table. They lie right over here and as you can see they are the fifth column along. So they have five outer electrons held in a P orbital. So we had our example of fluorine. Let's have a look at the electronic configuration of fluorine so we can see how exactly the electrons are configured. So we have our first two electrons held in a 1s orbital, the next two in a 2s orbital. That leaves five more electrons which will all be held in a p orbital. So we can see we have those five outer electrons held in a p orbital, this time in the second shell. Now looking at bromine. If we go back and have a look at our periodic table, you can see bromine is over here. Bromine is a halogen and bromine has 35 electrons. So if we have a look at the electronic configuration of bromine, it's going to be a bit longer and a bit more complex as we have more electrons. So we have a 1s2 shell, a 2s2 shell, a 2p6 shell, 3s2, 3p6. We then fill our 4 s2 shell and we completely fill our 3d10 shell. We now have our 4p shell which holds the 5 outer electrons. So again you can see our bromine has 5 outer electrons held in a p orbital. So let's have a look at the properties of the halogens. Well in general the halogens exist as diatomic molecules. What we mean by that is they exist as two atoms covalently bonded together. So they have the general formula X2 where X represents any of our halogens. So if we look at our example of fluorine you can see we have two fluorine atoms covalently bonded together to form a fluorine molecule, a diatomic molecule. Now our halogens all have different appearances. Fluorine is a yellow gas, chlorine a green gas, bromine a red-brown liquid, and iodine a black solid at room temperature. They also, in general, all have low melting and boiling points. You can see the melting point of fluorine is minus 220 and the boiling point minus 188. We can see that in general, all of the halogens here have low melting and boiling points. This is because there's only weak intermolecular force of attraction between our diatomic molecules. The only intermolecular force of attraction that exists are our London forces, those induced dipole, induced dipole force of attraction, which we know to be relatively weak. So now I've had a look at the properties of our halogens, let's go ahead and have a look at some of the trends that we observe when we look at group 17, our halogens. The first trend is that there's an increase in the atomic size as we move down the group. This is because each successive element down our group has another shell of electrons. In adding a shell of electrons, we're increasing the level of shielding, and therefore the outermost electrons are held less tightly and experience a lesser force of attraction to the nucleus, allowing for this increased atomic size. We also see a trend in the electronegativity of our halogens. Down the group, electronegativity decreases. This is due to two factors. Firstly, the outer electrons are held further from the nucleus. This is because there's increased levels of shielding. As we move down the group, we increase the number of shells of electrons. This increases the levels of shielding, meaning the outer electrons will experience a lesser force of attraction towards the nucleus and are therefore held further from the nucleus. The last trend is a trend in the boiling and melting points. In our previous slide, we discussed how, in general, the halogens have low melting and boiling points. Well, as we move down the group, the boiling point increases. This is because each successive element has an extra shell of electrons, as we've previously stated. This allows for a greater surface area for our molecule, and as a result, there'll be a greater degree of those London forces of attraction occurring. Now, the lower the boiling point, the more volatile the element. So down the group, we see a change in the physical state. The boiling point, remember, increases down the group. So we have fluorine, which exists as a gas, with the lowest boiling point. 
chlorine, which is also a gas at room temperature, bromine, which is this as a liquid, iodine a solid, and acetine a solid. And you can see as we move down, the boiling and melting points will be increasing as we increase the surface area over which our London force of attraction can occur. And so the physical state at room temperature will differ, changing from a gas through to a solid. Down group 17, we observe an increase in the melting point of our elements. Why is this? We know that the trend that we observe in our melting and boiling points is that down the halogen group, we see an increase in the melting points. Now, we know that's because as we move down, the atomic and therefore molecular size of the halogens increases, allowing for an increased surface area over which the intermolecular force of attraction can act. So if we have a look at our options, option A is that there's a greater molecular surface area. This sounds like the right option, but first let's go and eliminate the others. B, the covalent bonds increase in strength. That is not the reason why we observe this trend in our melting point. The electronegativity increases. Again, this is not the correct reason. The bond polarity decreases. Again, not the correct reason. So it is indeed A that is the correct answer. Looking at question two. Chlorine as a group 17 element. Draw a dot cross diagram showing only the outer shell of electrons to show the bonding in a molecule of chlorine. So we know that the molecule of chlorine will be diatomic because our halogens exist as diatomic molecules. And we're asked to show only the outer shell of electrons in our chlorine. If we go ahead and have a look at our periodic table, we can locate chlorine over here with 17 electrons. So chlorine has 17 electrons. It will have two in its first shell, eight in the second shell and there'll be seven left in the outermost shell so we can go ahead and draw our dot cross diagram now we can write two cls for our two chlorines and i'll draw my two circles here we know that the two atoms are going to be covalently bonded together they're going to have to share a pair of electrons in order for them to obtain a full outer shell of electrons so if i use crosses for my atom on the left and dots for my atom on the right you can do it either way so we have a shared cross and dot in the middle, then we'll have two crosses here, two crosses here, and two crosses here. That's the full seven. And if we have one, two dots here, two dots here, and two dots here, you can see that the left atom of chlorine has seven crosses and the right atom of chlorine has eight dots and you can see that if we include the shared pair of electrons, each atom has a full octet. So now if we look at part B. The halogens have London forces of attraction between their molecules. Describe and explain how these forces of attraction occur. Well, we know that the force of attraction occur because there's a temporary dipole. This temporary dipole induces a temporary dipole in the neighbouring molecule, allowing for these forces of attraction to occur. So how are we going to answer this question? First of all, we're going to explain that there is an uneven distribution of charge allowing for a temporary dipole. Now I've explained that there's a temporary dipole, we're going to explain how this allows for the attraction to occur. The temporary dipole induces a temporary dipole in the neighbouring molecule. So let's go and review where we get the three marks for our answer from. The first comes from explaining that there's an uneven distribution of charge. The second comes from stating that this results in a temporary dipole or an induced or instantaneous dipole. The third mark comes from explaining how this temporary dipole induces a temporary dipole in a neighbouring molecule. So therefore three marks have explained how these London forces of attraction arise between our halogen diatomic molecules. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.